With two men out and nobody on base, Bob Moorhead advancing to the plate here in the top half of the fifth inning. Sherman Jones is warm now and is sitting down since Moorhead is uh, going to hit for himself. Mets were hoping to have something started by this time, but uh, Moorhead's up there. Here's a swing and a miss for a strike. Nothing and one to Bob Moorhead with nobody on and two men out. Pitches outside for a ball. The outfield uh, plays Moorhead, shaded a little over toward right. That is a normal defense for a pitcher unless uh, he is a hitter known to pull the ball or a good hitting pitcher. He's figured that they're more likely to hit late than not. One and one to count to Moorhead. Curveball, and it's hit on the ground. Casco at third. He's up with it, plays across to Coleman at first in time, and Moorhead's out. Grounding out. From Eddie Casco to Gordon Coleman, and the New York Mets are out in the top half of the fifth inning with no runs, on no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And at the end of four and one half innings of play at Crosley Field in Cincinnati, the score is the Cincinnati Reds four and the New York Mets one. Well, folks, the Mets may be New York's brand new team, but they've got a few famous New York names going for them. New York baseball fans certainly are familiar with many of the well-known names from the past, and what about Ryan Goldbeer? Now there's a famous New York name, Rheingold, the largest selling beer in town year after year after year. Why is Rheingold so popular? Because it's more refreshing, naturally. Why is it more naturally refreshing? Because it's dry. That's right. Dry tells you why Rheingold has a taste all its own. It tells you that Rheingold is brewed the long, slow, costlier way to taste brisk and bright and clean clear through. Why not try a glass of Rheingold along with the game and see that there is a difference a difference you can really taste. You'll join the millions who already say, my beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. And right now, in order to allow our stations to identify themselves, we pause now for station identification. 810 on your radio dial, WGY Schenectady, the smoothest sound around. This is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner at Crosley Field in Cincinnati, where the Reds will be coming up here in the bottom half of the fifth inning, sending up Beta Benson, Frank Robinson, and Gordon Coleman. The Reds leading by a score of 4-1, to one, in case you have joined us along the way. The New York Mets got one run in the top half of the first inning. The Reds got one to tie it up in the bottom of the second, and then the Reds got three big ones in the bottom half of the third inning, and they lead now by a score of 4-1. to one. We have had no home runs in the ballgame. Benson at the plate has doubled and singled in two previous trips. His batting average right now is 390. As a drive down the right field line, a foul ball off the bat of Ada Benson. Strike one. I remember a year ago in March being in Germany conducting baseball clinics for the Army along with Fred Haney. And one of the soldiers asked a question of Mr. Haney. He said, if you were going to have your choice, of any ball player in the National League right now for the future, who would you pick? And Haney said, I'd pick Veda Pinson. He's a complete ball player. Moorhead's pitch goes high for ball. It's 1 1. He has speed. He can uh, hit and hit for distance. Feels the position well and has a good arm. Has never played in the polo grounds, but will be there next Tuesday night. Down to one ball and one strike as Bob Moorhead dips into the windup. The pitch down, swung out and missed. Pulled the string a little on him. It's one and two. There's nobody on and nobody out for the Reds, batting in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Bob Miller was the starting pitcher for the Mets. He went two and two-thirds innings in which he gave up four runs on six hits, struck out one and walked one. As a swing and a fly ball to the right side, second baseman Charlie Neal. Underneath, waiting and takes it. The out. 
So Vincent has popped out, one away. That brings up Frank Robinson. He's been up twice. He grounded out and walked. He's nothing for one officially. Robinson's batting average right now, 173. Getting the sign from Canizero. They play Robinson to pull. Stands right up there on the plate. There's a check swing pop down the first baseline in foul territory into the stands and out of play. Boucher gave it a run over there in front of the stands. Frank Robinson, 26 years of age. Has a lifetime major league batting average of 302. Out of one strike to him right now, right hand batter. Morehead with a wind up and the pitch down. I misses everybody. Comes on back. It's one and one. Last year was a great season for Frank Robinson. He was the slugging king of the National League with a mark of 611. Second successive year, he led the league in uh, slugging. Drove in 124 runs. That's a new all-time record for Cincinnati outfielders. Here's a pitch. It's low and away. This one gets away from Canizero and comes on back. He's chasing this one down. Two balls and one strike to count now. Last year, Frank Robinson had the longest batting streak in the National League, 19 games. He led the league in sacrifice flies with 10. He was on the National League All-Star team. Was the most valuable Cincinnati player of 1961 and the most valuable player in the National League of 1961. Time call for the moment as he stepped out of the batter's box. Now he's back in with a count of two balls and one strike. Up here with nobody on and one man out. Pitch is low and away. Ball three to Frank Robinson. He drew a walk in the third inning. Three and one. and a miss. It's strike two. Just before the pitch, Elio Chacon moved about three steps more into the hole. Playing Robinson to pull right there on the pitch. Now it's three and two. Here's a payoff pitch. Swung out and that's a fly ball to the left. Frank Thomas drifts over. He's getting underneath. He's waiting and he takes it for the out. Two away. Two men out, nobody on for the Reds. Batting in the bottom half of the fifth as the Reds lead the match by a score of four to one. Gordon Coleman is coming up. He flied to left and hit into a double play. Coleman is low for ball one. Coleman is hitting 268. One home run, seven runs batted in. Coleman is in there for a call strike. It's 1-1. One, one. Two men out, nobody on base for the Reds. is low, two and one. Gordon Coleman, during his minor league career, had a great record as a hitter, but uh, there seemed to be some doubt among baseball experts that he ever could hit major league pitching with that stance and that motion of bailing out, but last year, he stepped into the Cincinnati lineup and uh, was a big factor in their drive to the pennant. Here's a drive going on to right field for a base hit. Gus Bell up with it, relays it in, turning and holding it first is Gordon Coleman. With a single to right. That is the second hit for the Reds off Bob Moorhead since he came in to relieve Bob Miller. And coming up now is Wally Post. He's been up twice and he has two hits. He has driven in a run and he scored one. 
This is a fellow who has hit some tape measure home runs in his time around the National League. Wally Post. Right now his batting average is 340. He has five home runs and 11 runs batted in. He's off to a great start this year. Pitch is low for a ball. A couple of seasons ago, it appeared that uh, the career of Wally Post was just about ended. He was with the Philadelphia Phillies, and they were saying that he was just about at the end of the line, but he came back to Cincinnati, where he had known earlier fame, and stepped into the lineup of a pennant-winning baseball team. Swing and a miss. One and one. <laughs> Two men out. Coleman, the base runner at first. The defense is playing Wally Post to pull. Throw to first. Coleman's getting back safely. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Down low. Had a notion, but didn't swing through. And it's 2-1 and one now to Wally Post. Last year, Wally Post had a season's batting average of 294, and he had 20 home runs for the Reds. Bowman leads it first. 2-1 pitch. It's a call strike. 2-2. Two -two, caught a corner there. Bob Moorhead goes to the rosin bag just for the moment. Now Post steps back in. Reds have their four runs on eight hits. The Mets have their one run on four hits. Throw to first. Coleman dives back in this time. He's safe. Coleman leaves it first. Throw to first. He's back safely. Swing and a foul ball off the bat of Post. The count holds it 2-2. During the World Series played here last fall, construction was underway on a, an expressway behind the center field fence, and fans were all over the construction implements and the poles and everything else. Well, the expressway still is being built. The implements are not there, but fans are still out there on the embankment tonight looking over the center field fence at this ball game between the Cincinnati Reds and the New York Mets. His pitch swung on the ground ball foul out of play. This one is fielded by Reggie Otero, the coach at third for the Cincinnati Reds. Moorhead rubbing up the ball, looks around the outfield. Two balls and two strikes to count. The big Wally Post at the plate. Coleman leads it first throw over there. He's back safely. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out to retire the side as Bob Moorhead achieves his first strikeout since coming on in relief. And he gets the Reds out with no runs on one hit, no errors, and one left. And at the end of five full innings of play at Crosley Field in Cincinnati, the score is the Cincinnati Reds four and the New York Mets one. Sounds like New Yorkers are on the march. Like the song says, people everywhere sing out, my beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. And dry tells you why. Yes, sir, dry tells you Rheingold has a brisk, bright, clean taste all its own. Discover the difference dry makes. Pour yourself a tall, refreshing glass of Rheingold Extra Dry. Enjoy it, along with the ballgame. 
Well, the ground crew has come out to manicure the infield a little bit here in accordance with National League rules. With the president of the National League, Mr. Warren Giles, looking on from an upstairs box. And we'll be going to the top half of the sixth inning. The New York Mets have the head of the batting order up there, and we have the heading of the batting order up here. Bob Murphy. Thank you very kindly, Lindsay. In the sixth inning, Richie Ashburn, already two for two in the game, hopes to get things going for the New York Mets against veteran right-hander Bob Perkey. Richie singled to right field in the first, and he singled to right center field in the third inning. Well, Richie now needs but 37 hits to reach the coveted 2,500 mark. Outside, it's ball one. The active players in the National League only stand the man has more base hits than Ashburn. Richie hitting at 381. Eddie Casco playing in close at third against Ashburn. A strike on the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Young Johnny Edwards crouched behind the plate setting up the target. The 1-1 pitch. Taken high. Ball two, two and one. Well, after Ashburn gets two for two, one to right field and the other to right center, this time the Cincinnati Reds have straightened that defense up against him. They had been playing Richie to hit to the opposite field with Penson way over in left center. But this time, Veda is playing straight away against Ashburn. Now Bob Perkey deals two and one. A foul ball back into the upper deck and the count is even. Cincinnati, four runs on eight hits and no errors. The Mets, one run, four hits and no errors. Ryan Gold, extra dry. Happy to be sending you the play-by-play -play from Crosley Field in Cincinnati. Pitching two and two. Whacked foul down the left field line and out of play. Tonight at Milwaukee, Chris Short will be on the mound for the Phillies and Ron Pache for the Milwaukee Braves. At the end of three and a half, the Giants lead Pittsburgh one to nothing. Gaylord Perry for San Francisco, Bob Friend for the Pirates. Fouled again off the fist and back toward the crowd. It'll be out of play. They're underway now down in Houston, Texas. The Cardinals did not score off lefty Dean Stone in the top of the first inning. Ray Washburn going out to the mound to face the Houston Colt 45s. In a day game, the Cubs with four on the last of the eighth inning beat the Los Angeles Dodgers nine to six. Elston, the winner in relief, and Larry Sherry, the loser in relief of Jenny Padres. Fly ball hit deep down the right field line, and this will be foul. Richie Ashburn, who over the years has fouled many a pitch off. At the end of four and a half, the Minnesota Twins lead the Baltimore Orioles one to nothing. Don Lee against the Birds' Chuck Estrada. Fouled again. This time skimming back upstairs and the count stays at 2-2 on the Tilted Nebraska Comet, Richie Ashburn. The only other night game in the American League will find Cleveland on the West Coast at Chavez Ravine playing the Los Angeles Angels. Chavez Ravine has held no charm thus far for Bill Rigney's Angels. They have been having difficulty in winning there. They were beaten by Cleveland last night 3-2. And the ball has popped up down the third baseline, a foul ball. Getting under it, though, is Eddie Casco. And on the coaching lines, Casco takes it for the out. So Bob Perkey hung in there and wins his duel with Richie Ashburn. And that brings up Chacon. Elio on a hit-and-run play, single to left field in the first. He tried to go to second when Wally Post threw to third. But a good, accurate throw from Casco to blasting game nails Chacon going into second. Elio then struck out in the third. He has one hit and two times up. Chacon hitting at 313. Taken high. One ball, no strikes. Tomorrow will be an off day for both of these teams. Friday, Cincinnati goes into St. Louis. And, of course, the Mets are at home at the Polo Grounds against the Phillies. Taken for a strike. One ball, one strike. 
Next Monday, Cincinnati plays a benefit game against Cleveland here in Cincinnati, and then they fly into New York for the first night game of the season at the Polo Grounds. That'll be Tuesday night, May 1st. 1-1 one, one delivery. Breaking ball outside. Two balls and a strike. One out, nobody on. The Mets behind, four to one. Taken high by Elio Chacon. Three balls and one strike. Veteran right-hander Bob Perkey has not given up a walk, has struck out four. Allowed one run, four base hits. Three-one delivery. Ball four, it's inside and low, and there's the first one handed out by Bob Perkey. Now the number three hitter in the batting order, Gus Bell. This is one of those nights in which Gus has had no luck whatsoever. In the first inning, with the infield playing in, with the runner on third, one down, Gus hit a ground ball sharply that looked like it was a base hit, but Leo Cardenas left his feet, made a head-first dive to smother the ball, scrambled to his feet, fired to first in time to get Gus, and the lone Met run, Ashburn, came in to score on the play. His second time up, Benson went up the hill against the center field wall to take one. Inside and low, one ball and no strikes. Ballpark was just big enough to hold the one Bell hit his last time up. As Penson climbed the hill, put his back against the wall, and took it at the 390-foot mark. Chacon leading off first, one out. Perky off the stretch, delivers a foul ball, whipped back toward the screen. One ball, one strike. At Forbes Field, the Bucks came up with two in their half of the fourth inning. They now lead San Francisco 2-1 to one at the end of four. And at Milwaukee, the Phillies scored twice off Ron Pache in the top of the first inning. Tonight's paint attempt is 5,563. 55-63. 5,563, the paid tonight. Bell leans in and takes, and it's off the outside edge of the plate. Two balls and one strike. Gordy Coleman not holding against Elio Chacon with Bell, a left-hand hitter up there. Eddie Casco, even with the bag, wide of the line at third, and Leo Cardenas shaded toward second. The outfield swung around toward right. Pitching two and one. Drive hit hard, but it will be fouled on the right field line. Just ripping a curveball, but a little bit too far out in front, and it goes foul down the line. After the chilly weather of the first week of the season, it was quite an upset to get that temperature up to 88 degrees today. Two and two on Gus. Now he cocks the bat. In comes the pitch to him. Low, it's ball three. Now the string is out. Three and two to Gus Bell. Gus has hit many a home run into that moon deck in right field over the years. He spent nine seasons here at Cincinnati. Full count three and two. One down as Elio Chacon leads off first. Now the pitch. And it's a high fly ball to center field, not too deep. Ambling back a few strands, Veda Penson. And Veda makes the catch for the out. There are two away. Bob Perkey getting Gus Bell on three and two. That brings up Frank Thomas. Frank grounded out short to first in the first inning and then single to left field in the fourth inning. So Frank has one for two. He's hitting at 273. Leads the Mets in home runs with four and RBIs with seven. A half swing and a ground ball. Hit right back to the mound. Perky has it and throws to first to retire the side. Kind of a half-hearted swing. Frank started after it, then trying to hold up. 
No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on. At the end of five and a half innings, the score, the Reds four and the Mets one. Well, you know, folks, like the sign says, new team, new girl, same great beer. Yes, sir, New York has certainly taken to its brand-new National League team, the Mets. And our new Miss Rheingold 1962, well, who's more popular than lovely Kathy Kirsch? And that same great beer, Rheingold. It's been New York's favorite for as long as I can remember. How come so many millions choose Rheingold over all other beers? Simply enough. It's beer as beer should taste. Dry tells you why. Dry beer is lighter. More naturally refreshing, and Rhine Gold is extra dry. Extra dry for that extra refreshing taste no other beer can match. Why not see for yourself now what a difference dry makes? Enjoy a glass of refreshing Rhine Gold along with the game. You'll join millions who say, My beer is Rhine Gold, the dry beer. Johnny Edwards, one for two in the game, leading off against Bob Moorhead in the home half of the sixth inning. Day games today in the National League. The Cubs beat the Dodgers, nine to six. Yankees won a big one with four in the ninth inning to beat the White Sox, seven to six. Breaking ball taken, one ball and no strikes. The Red Sox beat Washington, seven to one, a five-hitter by Gene Conley. And Kansas City won a slugfest from Detroit, nine to eight. Two balls and no strikes. Well, you can never figure baseball, which certainly is one of the reasons it's our national pastime. Last night in Detroit, Don Massey outpitched or outdueled Dan Fister with the Tigers winning one to nothing. Today, the A's win it nine to eight. Drive hit hard to right center toward the alley. Ashburn running at full speed, won't be able to get there. It's bouncing off the wall in right center for an extra base hit. Edwards around second, checks up there. Johnny Edwards, the left-handed batting catcher, hit that one hard, a line drive. On one hop, it was up against the wire fence in the extreme right center field corner, 390 feet out. So that is the third hit given up by relief pitcher Bob Moorhead, the ninth in the game for Cincinnati. And the hitter will be Leo Cardenas, the shortstop. Cardenas has one hit and two times up. He singled in the second inning to drive in Wally Post with the first Cincinnati run. That tied the game one to one. The Reds went in front with three runs in the third inning and they lead four to one. Now the Mets are on the alert against the possibility of the bunt. Ed Boucher moving up the line. Down comes the pitch. He takes it outside ball one. Bob Perkey will be up next. And then Don Blassing game. Now the pitch on the way. Full swing and a line drive to right field for a base hit. It's rolling down the line and into the corner. Around third heading in is Johnny Edwards. Around second is Cardenas. He's flying toward third. And he'll be in at third standing up with a right field triple. Cardenas, a right-hand hitter, hit a hard line drive down the right field line and into the right field corner. It goes 366 feet to the right field corner at the foul pole. And by the time Gus Bell could run the ball down and get it back to Charlie Neal, they had no shot at all on Cardenas. He was in standing up with a run-scoring triple. So the Reds increased their lead to 5-1. to one. They have a runner at Cardenas on third, nobody out. And Bob Perkey coming up. And now the Mets will bring the infield in tight on the edge of the carpet. Once again, the sign has been sent to the bullpen and Roadblock Jones starts loosening up. That is the first run given up by Bob Moorhead. They look for anything in this spot. Down comes the pitch. 
swing and a miss, strike one. Leo Cardenas on third. Nobody out. The pitcher, Bob Perky, is up. Moorhead with the windup. Down comes the pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Once again, Perky checking with Reggie Otero, the third base coach. Don Blassing game on deck and then Eddie Casco. Moorhead winds and the pitch on the way is inside of the letters. One ball, two strikes. Cincinnati, five runs on ten hits, no errors. The Mets, one run, four hits, no errors. Pitching, one and two. He struck him out, swinging with a big breaking ball. And now before Don Blassing game steps in to hit, we'll step out for station identification. A-10 on your dial, WGY, a General Electric Station, Schenectady. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kiner from Crosley Field, Cincinnati. Don Zimmer, Chris Canazero, and Bob Moorhead talk things over now with the runner on third, Cardenas, who can run. Blasting game, a left-hand hitter up and one man out. Now Al Jackson, a left-hander, will start limbering up. So in the bullpen, the Mets have Sherman Jones, a right-hander, Al Jackson, a left-hander, both getting ready. The infield plays in tight. Blasting game, 0 for 2 in the game, has lined out to Ashburn, fly to Ashburn, but on base once when he was hit by a pitch and later scored. Down comes the pitch. Outside is ball one. Canazero cast a quick glance toward third. Now Moorhead looks the runner back into his windup. The pitch on the way. Strike called. A fastball at the letters. One ball and one strike on Don Blassing game. Don was passing out the cigars in the clubhouse prior to the ball game because he's the bouncing papa of a proud baby boy. One and one, the count on Blassing game. The pitch on the way. Misses the outside edge, two and one. Cardenas gave that one a good bluff as though he was coming. Last half of the sixth inning. Cardenas on third, one down. Now the windup and the pitch. Misses the outside corner, three and one. Cardenas came way down the line, then checked it up. And he may be bothering Bob Moorhead just a little bit. Three and one count on Don Blasting game. Three one delivery. Outside, it's ball four. Blasting game walk. That is the first walk given up by Bob Moorhead in relief. And it brings up Eddie Casco. Casco playing third has one for three. Single to center field in the third inning and later scored. Casco crossed the plate while the Mets were turning a double play. Every time the Mets turn a double play, it means 1,000 Viceroy cigarettes to the Veterans Hospital in New York. The same is true each time a member of the Mets hits a home run. the infield is halfway. The outfield a step toward left. For Eddie Casco, right-hand hitter. Runners at the corners, one man down. Casco the hitter, five to one. Cincinnati in front. Into the stretch now is Moorhead. Now the pitch. Starts him off with a curve and it breaks over for a call strike one. And now Don Zimmer turns to Ed Sudol, the third base umpire, and said, let's hold it for a moment. And he makes a quick journey to the mound. Met defensive infield must be alert for just about anything. 
Eddie Casco, the number two man in the batting order. Good hit and run man. Good bunner. Charlie Neal and Elio Chacon set up hoping for a double play. The one strike pitch. Fly ball looped to shallow right center field. Bell racing in at full speed. Makes the catch. Tagged up as Cardenas and he's going to hold up. He comes down the line to draw the throw, which was a good one. In perfect line for the cutoff man, Ed Boucher. And Ed, after seeing that Cardenas was holding up, cut the throw off. So the runners hold at first and third. There are two away, and the batter now, Beta Pencil. Beta has two for three. He is hitting a scorching 383. Beta has four home runs, 21 runs batted in. And now Casey Stengel is moving to the mound. He has Al Jackson, a left-hander, warming up. Along with the right-hander, Sherman Jones. Casey Stengel with arms folded in the midst of the huddle now on the mound, talking to his pitcher, Bob Moorhead. And the left-hander, Al Jackson, will be brought in to face Veda Penson. So Bob Moorhead will be leaving the game with two down in the last of the sixth inning. That means Moorhead pitches a total of three innings. He worked one-third of the third inning and two-thirds of the sixth inning. Bob Moorhead at the moment has given up one run, four base hits, walked one, and struck out two. Five to one the score. The Reds in front were in the last of the sixth inning, and now Bob Moorhead leaves the game. <laughs> Lefty Al Jackson will be making his fourth appearance of the year. Al has started twice. Appeared once in relief. He relieved against Pittsburgh, started against Pittsburgh, and then started against the Cardinals. Al Jackson, who was born on Christmas Day in 1935 in Waco, Texas, has won none and lost two. Throws a lot of curveballs and a lot of sliders. Al Jackson firing in his warm-up pegs to Chris Canizero. Al, the third pitcher tonight, used now by Casey Stingle. Bob Miller started. Bob left the game in the third when Cincinnati came up with three runs. In two and two-thirds innings, Miller gave up four runs, six base hits. Bob Moorhead in three has allowed one run, four hits, walked one, struck out two. So Casey Stingle anticipating that this situation might come up. About five minutes ago, sent the sign down to the bullpen for Al Jackson to hurriedly get ready. Casey going with the percentages, getting the left-hander into the face the left-hand hitter, Beta Penson. Don Zimmer playing in close at third, wide of the line. She going up a stride at short against the speed of Beta Penson. Now Jackson off the stretch. In comes his pitch. Curve is way outside. One ball and no strikes. Leo Cardenas on third. Don Blassing game on first. There are two away. Now Jackson makes the one second stop. Kicks the leg. Pitches. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. One ball, one strike to Penson. Beta Penson makes his first polo grounds appearance next Tuesday night, May 1st, in the very first night game of the year at the polo grounds. One and one, the count on Beta Penson. Now the pitch on the way. Outside and low, Canizero had to go out for it, and the count two and one. Sherman Jones continues to warm in the bullpen.
Pitching two and one. Taking a high ball three, and Jackson now is behind on Benson three and one. Frank Robinson, a right hand batter, waiting on deck. Beta with an over to close stance. Bends just slightly from the waist. Down on the knob of the bat. 3 1 delivery. A line drive into right field, a base hit for Veda Penson. Leo Cardenas is in to score, and the ball goes through the legs of Gus Bell. Passing game around third is digging for the plate. There'll be no play for him. He comes in, and Penson goes all the way to third base. It'll be a single for Veda Penson and an RBI driving in Cardenas. Penson's second RBI of the game. The ball gets through the legs of Gus Bell for an error, enabling blasting game to come in. And Veda Penson, who can really fly, goes all the way to third. And now the Reds on a six-run lead. They are out in front, seven to one. The batter is Frank Robinson. Here's the windup pitched by Jackson. Gets the inside corner for a strike. Both runs charged to Bob Moorhead. The runner on third, Penson, has the responsibility of relief pitcher Al Jackson. In comes the pitch to Robinson, fouled back into the screen, strike two. Frank starting the year in a batting slump. He's 0 for 2 in this game, has grounded out and fly to left. His other time up in the third inning, he drew a walk. Frank has nine hits in 53 times up. Infield back deep now. The two strike pitch. A high fly ball to left center. Richie Ashburn strolls to his right, is there, and makes the catch to retire the side. St. Louis nothing, Houston nothing after an inning and a half. Washburn against Dean Stone. In a day game, the Cubs got four in the eighth inning to outslug the Dodgers, nine to six. Elston, the winner in relief. Hobby had started. Sherry, the loser in relief. Padres had started. Duke Snyder, Willie Davis, Ron Sano, Ernie Banks, and Andre Rogers all hit home runs. Kansas City won a slugfest from Detroit, 9-8. Jerry Walker, the winner. Doug Gallagher, the loser. Minnesota won Baltimore nothing at the end of six. Don Lee against Chuck Estrada. The Yanks beat the White Sox 7-6, and the Red Sox beat Washington 7-1. And right now would be a good time to light up a Viceroy. Viceroy is not too strong, not too light. Viceroy has got the taste that's right. That's right. We're in the seventh inning now with Ed Boucher up against Bob Perkey, and the breaking ball is inside. Boucher 0 for 2, batting at 333. Perkey deals, breaking ball over a strike, one ball and one strike. One delivery. He lays off of it. It's up high. Ball two, two and one. Cincinnati, seven runs, 11 hits, no errors. The Mets, one run, four hits, one error. Infield in the outfield, around to right. Boucher swings and misses two and two. Charlie Neal on deck and then Don Zimmer. Pitching two and two. He swings at a knuckler, misses, and gets away from Edwards. Edwards throwing to first in time to get Boucher. He had to run it down about 10 feet after having it pop out of his mitt. Five strikeouts for Bob Perkey. And that brings up Charlie Neal. Charlie has been up twice tonight and both times been struck out by Perkey. Charlie hitting at 297 on 11 for 37.
Ground ball bounced right back to the mound, taken in the glove hand by Perky. He throws to Gordy Coleman, and there are two away. Bob Perky has been mighty tough. He has given up just two base hits since the first inning. He joined us late. The Mets scored their only run of the game in the first inning. Ashburn led off with a single to right. Chacon on a hit and run play, single to left. Richie went to third, and then Richie scored as Bell was thrown out. Ball one to Don Zimmer. Don 0 for 2 has grounded out short to first and fly deep to left field. Perky winding, and the pitch is hit high in the air to center field. Beta Penson moves in about three steps, draws a beat on it, and puts it away for the third out. So the Mets are out in order in their half of the seventh inning with no runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. At the end of six and a half innings, the score is Cincinnati 7 and the New York Mets 1. You know, after you've seen all the teams in action, it's fairly easy to spot the standout player at the various positions. Same way with filter cigarettes. After you've smoked all seven of the leaders, you know there's a big difference in Viceroy. Now, some taste so strong, you might as well not smoke a filter cigarette at all. And others taste so light, they take all the fun out of smoking. But you can tell Viceroy is an all-star the first time you try them. Yes, sir, Viceroy tastes the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. So fans, remember, there's a big difference in the taste of filter cigarettes. And the way to prove it for yourself is to catch up with the seven leading filter cigarettes in action. Yes, sir, smoke all seven. And I'll bet you'll agree with our rating. You'll find some taste too strong, some taste too light. But Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right, my friends. Better change to Viceroy and get the filter cigarette that bats 1,000 for taste. Seventh inning in Cincinnati, the Reds with a six-run lead have Gordy Coleman up against lefty Al Jackson. Gordy singled a right in the fifth inning, has one for three. Tried to hold up on a swing, but he foul tipped the ball, strike one. Gordy came up through the Cleveland organization, had a big year at Mobile, and then the Cincinnati Reds made a deal with Cleveland to get him. Outside, one ball, one strike. This for Gordy Coleman is his third year with the Reds. Last year was a good one. Hit 287, knocked 87 runs in. From Rockville, Maryland. The 1 1 delivery. Ground ball hit down the first baseline. Ed Boucher has it. He flips to Jackson covering in time for the out. Al Jackson reminds you a great deal of Harvey Haddix and Bobby Shans, the way he feels his position. Boy, he was over there to get that throw from Ed Boucher almost before Boucher had in his glove. One away, nobody on in the last half of the seventh. Now Wally Post. Wally off to a fast start. In the ninth game, he has two for three and has driven in a run. Post hitting at 333. Takes outside and lowest ball one. In 12 years, Wally has a lifetime average of 268. But he's been well over his lifetime average the last two years, the 11th and 12th of his career. Slow breaking ball for a strike. One ball and one strike. Last year he hit 294, and year before last, 282. He came back to Cincinnati right on the trade deadline, June 15th, year before last. Outside and low, two balls and one strike. For the ball players, undoubtedly the most nervous day of the season is June 15th. Pitching two and one. Breaking ball just off the outside corner, three and one. Year in and year out, trades are always made right on the deadline.
The Giants came up with four runs in the top of the sixth inning, and they have gone ahead of Pittsburgh five to two at the end of five and a half. It's outside, ball four, and Wally Post gets a base on ball. First walk given up by Jackson. That will bring up Johnny Edwards. Johnny Edwards has two for three. He hit a long double to right center his last time up. He was leading off in the sixth inning when he doubled, and he came in to score on a right field triple by Leo Cardenas. Reds in front, seven to one, home seventh inning. He leans in and takes. It's outside, ball one. One away with Wally Post on first base. Edwards hitting out of a crouch. Down comes the pitch. Inside at the knees, ball two, two and oh. Although the group of young pitchers for the New York Mets have encountered a lot of difficulty, George Weiss and Casey Stengel both still feel that they will get into a good groove and will pitch good ball. Ground ball back to the mound. Jackson has it. He throws the second to Chacon. One. Back to first. Safe on a close one. Johnny Edwards reaching on the fielder's choice. Jackson fired to Elio Chacon. But Elio's peg to Boucher was not in time for two. Now there are two away, and the hitter is Leo Cardenas. Cardenas has a big night going. A single. He flies to center, and he tripled to right. He has driven in two of the seven Cincinnati runs. Too high, ball one. Leo Cardenas and Veda Penson each have driven in two. Wally Post has knocked in one. One run scored while a double play was being made, and the other came in on an error charged to Gus Bell. Low ball two, two and oh. Cardenas, who got into about half of the games last year, hit over 300. Right now with eight for 34, he's batting at 235. Way outside, it's ball three, three and oh. Freddie Hutchinson forced to revise his infield somewhat due to the injury to Gene Freeze. They had hoped that Cliff Cook, a rookie who had a great year in AAA last season, would be the answer. But when he failed to get off to a good start in the spring, Freddie went to the veteran Eddie Casco. In there for a strike, three and one. We'll take a look at our complete scoreboard at the end of the inning. Jackson ready, deals three and one. The runner goes, grounder hit down to third. Zimmer up with it, even with a bag, hurries the peg in time, and they have Cardenas to retire the side. Zip had to put plenty on that throw because he had to come up to field the grounder. Side retired in the seventh inning with no runs, no hits, no errors, one left on. And now seven innings complete. The score, Cincinnati seven, and the New York Mets one. On our scoreboard at the end of two and a half, Phillies two and the Braves two, short against Boucher. At the end of five and a half, the Giants have gone ahead of Pittsburgh five to two. On home runs by Orlando Cepeda with two men on and Ed Bailey with the bases clear. Don Larson has relieved Gaylord Perry. He may have come in. Uh, Perry, Perry probably went out for a hitter. Bob Friend is in there for the Pirates. Houston nothing, St. Louis nothing at the end of three. Ray Washburn against Dean Stone. In a day game, the Cubs beat the Dodgers 9-6 with four in the eighth inning. Elston the winner, Larry Sherry the loser, five home runs in the game. In the American League, Kansas City 9, Detroit 8. Tigers were charged with five errors in that game. They used Doug Gallagher, Sam Jones, Paul Foytek, Fred Gladding, and Phil Regan. At the end of seven, Baltimore on a home run by Jackie Brandt has tied up the Minnesota Twins 1-1 one one at the end of seven. Nothing yet on Cleveland and Los Angeles on the West Coast. In day games, the Yankees storming from behind with four in the ninth inning beat the White Sox 7-6. to six. Whitey Ford, Bud Daly, Jim Coates, and Roland Sheldon for New York. 
With Sheldon the winner, he came on in the ninth. Bizarro, Fisher in the ninth, and Lown in the ninth, Fisher the loser. Landis and Scourin hit home runs. A five hitter for Gene Conley, the Red Sox beat Washington seven to one. Home runs by Frank Malzone and Gene Conley. Now Chris Canazero is up. And the pitch thrown by Perky is a strike on the outside corner. Casey Stengel has roadblock loosening up again with the pitcher scheduled up next. Next pitch. Breaking ball over a call strike. Two strikes to Chris Canazero. Chris 0 for 2 in the game. Jim Marshall has come out on deck. Foul tip. He missed it on the knuckleball. A ball dropped by Edwards. He picks it up. Throws to first in time. Yanazaro almost legged it down there in time. We thought at first it was a foul tip, but he had swung and missed the pitch. It hit against the chest protector. Bounded away, and Edwards retrieved and threw in time. Now Jim Marshall is coming up to bat for Al Jackson. Bob Perky, who has walked only one man, now has struck out six. Jim Marshall stepping in to pinch hit. He tries to bunny his way on, but the ball goes foul off to the left. No play, strike one. Jim hitting at 3-13. Five for 16, including two home runs. All three of the New York Mets first basemen have real good power when they get a hold of one. Taking high, one ball, one strike. The Mets, after tonight's game, will be back in the polo grounds for six games. Four games with the Phillies over the weekend, Friday, Saturday, doubleheader on Sunday. Then the first night game of the year, Tuesday night against Cincinnati, and a day game on Wednesday against the Reds. The ball has popped up to short left field. Moving out goes the shortstop, Leo Cardenas, and he has it for the out. Bob Perky just seems to be getting stronger as the game rolls along. He has now retired seven in a row. He has not given up a base hit since the fourth inning when Thomas singled. Perky has retired 13 of the last 14 hitters. The only man to reach along that string was Elio Chacon when he drew a walk. Now Richie Ashburn is up. Richie's two for three. Runs up as if to bunt. Takes it. It's strike one call. Eighth inning, Cincinnati seven, New York Mets one. Bob Perky swings into his windup. Now pitches. Curve inside, one ball, one strike. Richie Ashburn choking up on the handle of the bat. Wax it foul back up into the crowd. One ball and two strikes. They changed their defensive strategy against Richie after his first two times up. First two times he came up, they had Penson over in left center. Moved everything around, playing him to hit to the opposite field, and both times Richie got bases to right field. And now they are playing him almost straight away. On the left side of the infield, Cardenas, the shortstop, has moved a stride or two over toward the hole. Knuckleball outside. The count is even at two and two. Milwaukee Braves are exploding against Chris Short and the Phillies in the last half of the third inning. Eddie Matthews has rocked a three-run homer, and Joe Adcock has hit one nobody on. 
popped up off the fist down the first baseline. Up the line comes Gordy Coleman. In fair territory, he takes it for the out. Mets are out in the eighth inning with no runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. And now at the end of seven and a half innings, the score, the Cincinnati Reds seven, and the New York Mets one. Coming up now, a medley with an old world flavor. Dick Damone saying down on Mulberry Street, far and near, the one they like is Rheingold beer. Rheingold la birra da bere, che delizia poterla godere. Dolce amara non è, ma perfetta lo è, comperate la Rheingold teste. Italian and English have the same word for refreshment, Rheingold. Remember that name when you want beer that's brisk and bright and clean, clear through. Dry tells you why. Rheingold is brewed the long, slow, costlier way. It's New York's favorite. It's beer as beer should taste. My beer is Rheingold, a dry beer. Think of Rheingold whenever you buy beer. It's not bitter, not sweet. It's the dry flavor treat. Won't you try extra dry Rheingold beer? Ciao. The last half of the eighth inning now, and the New York Mets have Sherman Roadblock Jones coming in to pitch. Al Jackson leaving the game in favor of a pinch hitter, Jim Marshall. And now Roadblock is all set to go to work in the last of the eighth inning. And the leadoff hitter for Cincinnati will be Bob Perkey. Perkey has been up three times, failed to hit, twice has been struck out, and in the fourth inning, fly to center. Down in the bullpen, Jay Hook is just tuning up. Squibber hits slowly down the first baseline. Coming up to the ball is Ed Boucher. He puts the tag on Perky as he comes down the line, one away. An unassisted play for Ed Boucher. And now before Don Blassingame steps in to face Roadblock Jones, let's pause for station identification. 810 on your dial, WGY Schenectady, the smoothest sound around. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kainer from Cincinnati. The Reds leading 7-1, last of the eighth inning. The leadoff hitter, Don Blassing, game up. Left-hand batter leans in and takes ball one. Blassing game has lined to Ashburn in right center, been hit by a pitch and later scored. Fly to Ashburn in center and drawn a walk. Foul ball back, one ball and one strike. Last year, a blasting game's average fell off to 222. But lifetime, he's a 261 hitter. Zimmer in close to third. Fastball on a strike on the inside corner, and Roadblock had plenty on that one. Roadblock has a real good fastball, and Red Ruffing has been working with him, trying to get him to go with it more. Sherman out of his windup, the one-two pitch. Outside and high, two and two on Don Blasting game. Blasting game came to Cincinnati along with Bob Smith and the fellow on the mound right now, Sherman Jones, for Ed Bailey. Two-two pitch. Foul ball back, no play. In that trade, only Blasting game remains with the Reds. Smith has gone to Washington, and of course, Sherman Jones to the Mets. Two-two delivery. Just got a piece of that one, a foul ball coming back, no play. Mets flying home right after the game tonight. They'll be getting in to New York in the wee hours, probably around 2, 2.30. Tomorrow is an off day. They'll be tendered a salute tomorrow night by the Manhattan Club. And Friday, they play the Phillies at the Polo Grounds on the opener of the homestand. An off-speed delivery by Roadblock, missing three and two. (laughs) 
Pitching three and two. Fastball outside, ball four. Blasting game on base for the third time tonight. The Mets have used four pitchers in tonight's game, and each pitcher has given up one walk. Bob Miller, Bob Moorhead, Al Jackson, and now Sherman Jones. Here's Eddie Casco. Eddie has one hit in four times up. He's single to the third inning. Right-hand batter. Blasting game with a leadoff first. And the pitch is taken, ball one. Eddie Casco from Linden, New Jersey. Five-year veteran who first came up with the Cardinals. Strike on the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Last year, Eddie hit 271. Blasting game, leading off first, and now Roadblock steps off. Last year, when Eddie Casco hit 271, he just about hit his lifetime average, which is 272. A throw to first. Not in time. And Blasting Game is asking Tom Gorman, the first base umpire, about the move made by Roadblock. The 1-1 pitch. Ground ball hit down to third. Zimmer has it. Fires across to Neal. There's one. On to first. Not in time. Blasting Game went hard into Charlie Neal at second base. Ball had been thrown from deep third by Don Zimmer. So they forced Don Blassing game from Don Zimmer to Charlie Neal. Gasco reaching on the fielder's choice. And that brings, brings up Beta Penson. <laughs> Beta Penson has three for four in tonight's game has driven two runs in. Tried to hold up strike one. In three full seasons with Cincinnati, Beta had his first full season, 205 hits. His second year, 187, and last year, 208. Lifetime average of 313. He appeared in 27 games in 58 after a big year at Seattle. Now the pitch by Roadblock. Ground ball bounced rather slowly on the right side of the diamond. Neal reaching the ball, running toward the hole, throws to Boucher for the third out. Side out in the last half of the eighth inning. And for the Reds, no runs, no hits, no errors, one left on. So at the end of eight, the score, the Cincinnati Reds seven and the New York Mets one. And we'll be going along to the ninth inning with the Mets coming in and pinning their hopes on Elio Chacon, Gus Bell, and Frank Thomas. We hope you're making your ticket plans now to catch action at the Polo Grounds in the six-game homestand. The Phillies in for day games on Friday, Saturday, and a doubleheader Sunday. Monday at open date. Then the first night game of the year on Tuesday night, May 1, against Cincinnati. The Reds again on Wednesday, May 2nd. The tickets are on sale at Grand Central Station, the 42nd and Vanderbilt ramp, the Long Island waiting room of the Penn Station, and the Polo Grounds. Remember, too, if you find it more convenient, the ticket reservations may be made at all Howard closed stores. And if you prefer to order your tickets by mail, address your correspondence to the ticket manager, Polo Grounds, New York 39. Box seats are $3.50. Reserve seats $2.50. Include $0.25 cents for postage and handling. Elioshi Cohen will be leading off of the ninth inning against Bob Perkey. Perkey has retired 14 of the last 15 hitters that he has faced. The only man to reach of the last 15 was Chacon, who drew a walk in the sixth inning. Now Perkey into his windup and the pitch thrown. A looper hit in the air out towards second. Under the ball is blasting game and he takes it for the out. Kind of a soft line drive, not really enough height to it to be a pop-up. One away in the ninth. The 
Mets have been held to four hits by Bob Perky, and the batter now is Gus Bell. Gus 0 for 3 tonight. Way inside, he had to jump back to get out of the way. Ball one. Now Perky cranking up. Down comes the pitch. A strike on the inside corner. One ball, one strike. Beta Penson has led the red leg attack tonight with three for five and two RBIs. Leo Cardin is two for four and two RBIs. Johnny P uh, Wally Post and Johnny Edwards each getting two hits. Ground ball on the right side of the diamond. Gordy Coleman off to his right. Grabs it. Throws to Perky covering in time. Two men down in the top of the ninth inning. down to their final out in the ninth inning. We'll have Frank Thomas coming up. Mets held to four hits by Perky. Ashburn two, Chacon one, and Frank Thomas one. Drive hit hard in the air to left field. Coming in is Wally Post. He, make, he drops the ball and breaks off his glove. Thomas around first is on his way to second, and he'll go into second base standing up. It'll be scored as a two-base error against Wally Post. It was a hard line drive. Post coming in, got his glove on it, but failed to hold it. Perky had retired 10 straight. That breaks the string. He has not given up a hit since back in the fourth inning. They had a wild inning in the fourth down in Houston. The Cardinals scored four runs, and Houston came right back for three runs. So the Cardinals lead the Colt 45s 4-3 to three at the end of four. Washburn and Stone, the starters, are still in there. Kurt Flood, a line drive hitter, hit a two-run homer. Inside and low, ball one to Ed Boucher. The Braves got four in the third inning, and they now lead the Phillies 6-2 to two at the end of three and a half. Giants five, Pirates two at the end of six. The Cubs won a day game from the Dodgers, 9-6. They're in the ninth inning in Baltimore. Minnesota won, and the Orioles won. Inside and high. Ed Boucher, the batter. Two down, Frank Thomas on second. Now Bob Perky, behind on the count, 2-0, oh, up in pitching position. Here's the pitch, and the ball is a foul pop-up toward the backstop, and no play for Johnny Edwards. on Ed Boucher. Red 7, Mets 1. We're at the top of the ninth inning. In comes the pitch to him. Swing and a miss on a fastball. 2-2. Two and two. Jim Lemon has just hit a two-run homer in the top of the ninth inning at Baltimore. And the Minnesota Twins have gone in front of the Orioles 3-1. to one. That is the only night game going in the American League. The Cleveland at Los Angeles game has yet to start. It'll be about 45 minutes away. The other American League games were in the afternoon with the A's beating Detroit 9-8, the Yankees beating the White Sox 7-6, the Red Sox beating Washington 7-1. He went to a knuckleball on 2-2, two and two, but it flutters outside, and now the string is out 3-2. and two. Full count 3-2 and two on Boucher, Frank Thomas on second, two men down. Met six runs behind in the top of the ninth. Pitching three and two. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. And so Bob Perky, finishing mighty strong, gets his seventh strikeout of the game. Perky retired 17 of the last 19 hitters. The only two men to reach along the way, one with a walk and the other as the result of an error. So we'll check the line score of tonight's game and have a word about the Friday action at the Polo Grounds in just one minute. 
Well, you know, there's an old saying that goes, there's no such thing as a bad beer. It's just that some are better than others. Well, we can su su subscribe to that, all right. But what does make one beer better than another? We believe we have the answer in the word dry. Yes, sir, dry tells you why Rheingold is a better beer. Better because it's more refreshing, more wonderfully suited to your taste. Rheingold is beer as beer should taste. Brisk and bright and clean clear through. Rheingold's extra dry brewing process is long, slow, and costlier, but it pays off in taste. The better taste you find with Rheingold alone. So if you're searching for a better beer, look no more, my friend. Look to Rheingold Extra Dry. Enjoy a glass of fine, cold Rheingold along with a ball game and see why millions say, my beer is Rheingold the dry beer. Right-hander Bob Perkey is the star of the show tonight in Cincinnati as the Reds sweep the two-game series. Perkey checking the New York Mets on four hits. He gave up only one run, and that was in the first inning of the game. After the first inning, over the last eight, he allowed just two base hits. Retired 17 of the last 19, with only Elio Chacon with a walk and Frank Thomas on an error, reaching along that uh, string. Line score, Cincinnati, seven runs, 11 hits, one error, eight left on. The New York Mets, one run, four hits, one error, and four left. Veteran Bob Perkey all the way on a strong game, winning his third without a loss. Losing pitcher Bob Miller. Bob now has one none and lost two. Miller left the game in the third, replaced by Bob Moorhead. Moorhead in turn was relieved by Al Jackson in the sixth inning. And Sherman Jones came on in the eighth inning. On the attack, it was Veda Penson starring for Cincinnati with three for five and two runs batted in. Leo Cardenas, the shortstop, had two for four and knocked two runs in. And Wally Post and Johnny Edwards each had two hits in the game. The paid attendance, 5,563. Our thanks to our statistician, Joe McDonald, and to our engineer, Joe Kresnica. And that wraps up another New York Mets game. We certainly hope you enjoyed it. Viceroy certainly enjoyed bringing it your way. Well, the Mets now will be flying back to New York via their chartered airliner tomorrow and off day They'll be in action at the Polo Grounds on Friday afternoon against the Philadelphia Phillies, and we hope you'll be there to give the Mets a big welcome. This broadcast came to you through the courtesy of the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation. B&W, the mark of quality in tobacco products, and Liebman Breweries, brewer since 1837, and is authorized under radio rights granted by the New York Mets solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other uses of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets is prohibited. <coughs> right now, I'd like to remind you to enjoy fine, cold Rheingold. Rheingold Extra Dry. Those two little words, extra dry, tell you why Rheingold is preferred by more New Yorkers than any other beer. Now, here is beer with a clean, clear taste, brisk and bright all the way through. And dry tells you why Rheingold Extra Dry is beer as beer should taste. Now this is Bob Murphy saying so long for Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kiner, our producer Joe Gallagher, and for Viceroy. Viceroy is not too strong, not too light. Viceroy has got the taste that's right. That's right. Final score, Cincinnati 7 and the New York Mets 1. So long, everyone. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network.